Well, good morning again. Great to see all of you here this morning. It's just good to be in the house of God. I'm trying to put my finger on all that God's doing. He does so much, you know. It's, uh, but uh, I, I just really enjoy just worshiping with you together. Um, we miss Pastor Kerry when he's gone, but we believe that that what is being imparted and sown is actually being reaped in the house. Amen? Comes back on us. So we just receive that part of the kingdom. We are just so thankful for the spiritual impartation that's going forth all over, all over the world. And, and just continue to pray for Israel. Continue to pray for the leadership. Continue to pray for the people. Continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world that are having to make very difficult choices. I mean, the choice is just theirs, and the, they, they love Christ, and we, we've seen on the news so many that are just choosing Christ and will die for their faith. And we just need to continue to pray for them, pray for the grace of God just to be their sufficiency in this time. And uh, I just, I'm so glad that uh, I, we get to be a part of a church that enjoys prayer and that believes in the power of prayer. And, and we have prayer meeting on, two, uh, on Wednesdays at, uh, at 10 o'clock. And then also, that's, that's for everybody. And then on Thursdays, we have men's prayer at, at 9 to 10.30-ish, depending on how far you go. <laughs> um, and you're welcome to come in any of that. And we also have early morning prayer, and that meets at 7, 7 to 8 every day. So you are welcome to come here, and we just pray together, and we just beseech the Lord, and uh, we just see the goodness of God come. It's just, it's so good. Uh, we just have just seen so many great things God is doing just through all of our prayers that are, are being raised up. So I, I just want to thank God. We just thank you, Father. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. We submit ourselves to you, who, to you here. We submit our lives to you, O oh God. We thank you for the working of your Holy Spirit this day. We thank you that you are working in us. Even right now, you are working in us. Lord, that you are, you are working your good works. Lord, that you minister to us as you desire to do, that you build and you change and you, you establish. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray that this day that we would be, we would be the clay that, that, that is moldable and that doesn't say back to the potter, what are you doing? But we will say to you, Lord, have your way with us. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our lives, Lord. We just ask that you would just you you would you would press and you would you would form and you would fashion your good will and your good purpose on the inside of us, Lord. That we would be the the vessel that you choose for us to be, Lord. We thank you that you have created us for your purposes. You have created us uniquely to worship your name, to love you with all that we are, to extend your kingdom. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you for that. And we pray that this day that you would just work your works on the inside of us, change, mold, remake. Lord, we just say even wreck us if you have to wreck us. Lord, we just agree with you. We agree with what you want to do. And we thank you, Lord, that we don't go from your word. We don't go from your presence, the same people as we were when we came in. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we go, we, we come in, we come in and we receive blessing. We go in the power of the Spirit. So, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for what you're doing this morning. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Could I share something with you that I saw uh, this morning, as I was talking about pain, um, I, I saw Jesus uh, just walking over to people and just getting right beside them and, and just like putting his arm around them. And I, I just felt like him sharing, sharing in what that person was going through. And, I, and I, I feel that really by the Spirit. I don't know how, I, I don't make those things happen, uh, but I feel by the Spirit that that's happening. I want you to feel Jesus just right next to you. I want you to even see just even scars on his hand and, and even scars on his brow and scars on his feet. I want you to 
to feel his heart. It says clearly in Scripture, he is near to the brokenhearted. I want you to know that he is near you today. He is near each one of you today. And he is so near to the brokenhearted because he comes from a place of complete empathy. He knows exactly, exactly the pain. And I want you to, to receive him today. We receive you in these places today, and we thank you, Jesus, that you come and you work your work on the inside of us. Lord, you knit us together in the, father's, in, in the mother's womb, and you, you knit us together. You, you, you established who we are. Lord, we, we pray that you, even those things that have been broken, even have been torn in our, in our hearts, Lord, we pray that there would just be a knitting together right now by the Spirit. That Jesus, you just come. We invite you. We invite you to, to work your works. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing. You are the Lord who heals us. And we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning, I, I want to start off in Psalm 119. And we're going to... There's a few different passages in Psalm 119 that we're going to go to. And the, the the first verse I want to look at is Psalm, um, uh, Psalm 119, verse 89. And the Lord was just stirring this in me, and, and I, I hear it from the Lord, and when I hear it from Him, I know what he's, he's wanting me to share this with you. And so this is the scripture the Lord has been, been putting on my heart. And uh, it, it's... Pastor Kerry has been talking about, or he started a series on the power to change. And... And as he was talking about that, the Lord was just reminding me of the power of the word in my own life to change. And then he brought me to this scripture in, in Psalm 119.89 and just really began to solidify some, some of his things on the inside of me. And I was reminded even, and, and you know that I like to t- kind of tell stories about my dad, and the Lord was reminding me of, of a time oh, I used to work for my dad in high school, and my dad was in charge of uh, he, he was a superintendent of an office building, and he was in charge of everything that re- pertains to the, the building, the exterior, the, if it's cleaned, all that stuff. And so he had crews and different things working for him, and, and I, I ended up working for him. And one thing that my dad loved to do was he, he loved to uh, plant flower beds. And, and he, was, he, he had the, a passion for it. And... And I remember a time when my dad was, was having to go away, and he wanted me to plant a flower bed. And so he laid it all out to me. He said, this is what I want, and I want this, and I want this, I want this, and I want this, and this is how you do it, and this is how I, I'd like it to be. And he just, he just laid the whole thing out to me. And so I, I, I got the word, I, I got all of his words, and, and as I started to try and do it, I just... I just couldn't figure it out. I wasn't catching it all. And I just kept, uh, I, I remember when I, when I, the flowers were actually delivered that he wanted to, for me to plant. And, and he, uh, he had them just delivered in, in, uh, in, in the place where they were supposed to be put. And so here's all these flowers. And I just remember standing there and just kind of shaking my head. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and I was looking at this flower bin and I thought, how... How am I going to make this be any good? And in fact, this flower bed was where the, uh, the break room was for this office building. So everybody looked out over this flower bed. And so that was just putting more pressure on me, and I just didn't even know what I was going to do. And so what, what happened was, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just left them sit there. I was like, that, 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 that looks about good right there. I'll just let them sit. Well, my dad comes back. And, and he had just been gone like a day or two, and he comes back, and those things are just still sitting there. And he was like, what are you doing? I was like, I, I didn't know what to do. He's like, well, I told you. I told you all the things that I wanted you to do. And, and you know, he had this picture of what it was going to look like, and he had all this stuff. And, and I said, Dad, I just I couldn't quite grasp it. He was like, well, you, sh- you, you could have just, just started digging and doing anything. I was like, no, I didn't want it to. I didn't want to look bad, right? And so dad, he says, okay. And so he gets down on his knees and he starts preparing the soil and getting this, this big thing ready. And then he just starts working. And then he starts talking to me about it. 
and he just starts leading me through it. And, and just one thing after another, and just after, a, you know, it wasn't even an hour, maybe a little bit more than that. But he had all of these things in this beautiful display of flowers in this flower bed. And it was, it was tiered, you know, you had the, the shorter flowers towards the outside and they kind of built up. And then you had this, he put in the, the middle, he had this big, dis, this, this spray kind of in the middle. It just kind of came up with, with and I think it was uh, red, uh, red leaves just shooting up like this. And I was just astonished. I thought, man, that is just beautiful. And, and I realized something, I mean, I realized a number of things. You know, my dad just had an eye for that. He knew what he wanted. He could see what he desired in that flower bed. And as much as he, he was sharing with me, I still wasn't quite catching, catching really what he wanted until he got down and then we just started working together and he just kind of showed me exactly what he wanted me to see. Yeah. And as I, as, I, as I read the word and hopefully this this brings to light what I'm trying to, to come into this morning. As I, as I read some of this, the word of God, I see, I see that heart of God where, where he has his words, and his words are incredible, and he has his vision, and he has his desires, and he, he's sharing them to us, but sometimes we're just quite not catching it, Right? But still, it's his word, and still, it's true, and still, it's exactly his vision and what he wants. And so, in in this verse, it says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It is settled in heaven. That the word settle, uh, not sala, it means really pillar, a pillar, standing firm, strong, steady, steadfast. It is always there that his word is strong. It is set. It is not changing. And that I take courage in that, that 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 doesn't change. That he is in the heavens and his word doesn't, isn't one thing one day and one thing another. Because it's, it's who he is. It's his character. It says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that his words are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And they are established in the heavens. They are set in heaven. That healing is set in heaven. Provision is set in heaven. Kindness is set in heaven. Love is set in heaven. That these things are all set in heaven. They are established. They are not changing. Because our God is not changing. And so that's why he says in verse, in verse 90, your faithfulness continues throughout all generations. You establish the earth and it stands. That it is set in him. Just even as my dad, that I believe that that flower bed was, I mean, there was maybe some variations of where each one was just going to sit. But that flower, was, that flower bed was set in him. He had that. He had what he wanted in him. It was set. And it really, I wasn't going to change it all that much. I mean, maybe I could have brought a couple ideas, but it was pretty much set what he wanted. (laughs) And I'm glad it was because it was beautiful. But the the Lord says to us that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever, that you can count on me, that I am faithful, that I am not changing, that I am strong and secure. And in times where where circumstances are just kind of crazy, we can trust and believe in that, Lord God, your word is established in heaven. It is not changing. You are still for me. You know that his words in heaven are not just words uh, about himself. They are words about you too. That his words and his belief and and what he believes on you are set in heaven. That you are my son and whom I love. I'm well pleased with you. That you carry my righteousness. That you you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That there are things in heaven that he speaks about me. That they are set in the heavenlies. In 1 Peter, and you can kind of hold your finger in Psalm 119. In 1 Peter 1, 23 to 25, uh, we see Peter talking about this, this word. 
that he has seen. First Peter 23. And then Peter is quoting, actually, even from Isaiah 40. But he says, For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass in all its glory, like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which was preached to you, that it is a living and enduring word of God. That is living, that is, it is active in the heavens, and it, is, it, it lasts forever. That it's not going to change. Jesus said to, to the, the Pharisees, to the disciples, he said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That what I have said is true, and it will remain true, and it will always stay true. That in Psalm 19, verse 1 and 2, it says, The heavens are declaring or telling the glory of God. And that their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day after day pours forth speech, and night after night reveals knowledge. That the heavens contain all of God's glory. Not all of it, but it contains God's glory. We know that there is glory of God on the earth too. But there is this, there is this shifting of the glory of God, the, the heavenly realities that God wants to happen on the earth. That there is a settling of the word in the heavens, but he also wants to settle it then in us. That it is settled, it's not changing, it's not moving. That we can stand on it. We can be secure with it. That there is this settling that he desires on the inside of us that we settle into this same word. Isaiah 59, 21 says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit which is on you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall, de- de- not, shall not depart from your mouth nor from your mouth of your offspring, nor from the mouth of your offspring's offspring, says the Lord, from now on and forever. Sounds to me like the word will always be in us. That he wants that word in us, and it, wa- and it needs to be settled in us. If you turn back in Psalm 119... Of course, Psalm 119 is, a, a, it is poetical, and each, each section is a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and verse 9 is the second section. It says, it begins, how can the young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to what? Your word. Uh, keeping it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word have I treasured. In my heart. That there is a settling of the word of God that he wants in our heart. That there is a stable place that he wants to be on the inside of us. And I'm not moving from this place. And it comes from the word getting on the inside of us. That the word not just being spoken, and certainly it is spoken to us and we read it in the word. But we need to receive it and get it on the inside the word, the word for treasure or hidden means you're concealing something of great value. You are grabbing hold of its value and you, you, you see it. You, you let it stay where it needs to stay and it stays in your heart. So there are, of course, the perfect number, seven, but there are, there are seven things that, that we can pull out of here how the word gets settled into me because We don't want to be like a a double-minded man that's unstable in all his ways, that we believe one thing one day and believe one thing another. That comes from the word not being settled on the inside of us. That I need to allow the word to settle in me. That I need to allow the word to to breathe life into my life that it changes even the things and circumstances around me that I think, well, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. 
So I, I've said the first one, treasure it. You treasure it in your heart. You get it on the inside of you that I might not sin against you. It says that Mary treasured the words that the angel spoke to her. She treasured those words in her heart. And that when Jesus went, when they took Jesus into the temple and he was blessed and he was prophesied over, it says that Mary treasured these words. She treasured the prophetic word that was spoken over Jesus. She treasured these things. She got it down on the inside of her. And she says, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to happen. She was treasuring and grabbing hold of these words. Uh, the second thing, blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. We need to learn these things. How do we learn these things? We, we dig into the word. We let the, we let the word teach the word. That there are so many things in Scripture, we, we think, well, what does that mean? Well, go into the other Scriptures that tell you about the Word. That tell you about that Word. That we allow the Word to teach the Word. That we need to be taught by the Word. We need to learn it. The third thing is we declare the Word. With my lips I have told of the ordinances of your mouth. The Word is... The, with. My lips I have told, it really is declaring, it's recounting, it's setting a mark. I am recounting the things that God said, that God has done, that God has spoken to me. I am rehearsing them over and over. That when, when uh, I, I was even talking, about the, talking to the men on, on Thursday night, that that we need to be good at rehearsing the good things that God has said to us. And that sometimes we, you can get down or grumpy, and I was talking to the men there, you know, sometimes when we're hungry and we're tired, we get a little grumpy and cranky, you know. Well, we need, we need joy. We need to allow joy to erupt from where? The inside of us, because God says he's put joy on the inside of us. So how do we tap into that joy that's been put on the inside of us? We tap into that joy... By rehearsing the things that Jesus says about us, about, about who we are, about what he's done for us, that I rehearse those things. And it begins to bring joy in my heart that I have this living hope. I have an internal inheritance, that I am a son of the Most High God, that I'm no longer an orphan, that, that these things God gives us so that we can rehearse them and that, that allows and it, and it gets the word to just settle in us and bring strength. So we declare those words. We speak it out. And in fact, recounting even talks about kind of memorizing. Man, I remember as a kid, we used to always have to memorize Scripture, right? That should never change. Why is that a kid thing? That's not a kid thing. I think that we as adults need to continue to allow the Word to, to speak to us, that we, we memorize it, we give ourselves to it, we meditate on it. We celebrate it, which is the next one. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies. You notice all these words that he's using, statutes, testimonies, commandments, uh, your, your ways, your word. All of these things are synonyms for the word of God, for his word. And in fact, all of Psalm 119 has these synonyms, but it's all about the word of God. So I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all trials. I love it that we sing, sing the word. Singing the word is so powerful. It just brings life. You know, we've, we've been singing some new songs, and, and I just was thinking of, of, of Song of Solomon, you know, we have sung different songs of Song of Solomon, but I just love that song, you know, set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for, for your love is as strong as death, jealously demanding as the grave. You know, that's the word of God that we're singing. And when we're singing that, there's no wonder that the Spirit is just churning on the inside of us because we are singing what He says. <laughs> Whew. And then when, when, it, when that Spirit just begins to breathe life into you, don't, it, it, it changes you. That I go out of here singing that same thing. I, I go out here singing, I've been set as a seal upon your heart, Lord. 
I have a place in your heart, my God. You know, rejoice, rejoice is akin to uh, the Greek word, which means it, it's really celebrate. It's like jump around. Jump and dance around. I am in the heart of God. That I can be excited about that. That it's not just a Sunday morning thing that we, that we praise and honor the Lord. That sometimes allow the Spirit of God to get upon you and, you know, in Brahms. <laughs> not just because you like the ice cream. But just allow the Spirit of God to just rise up with His Word and just pour out from you in that place. Okay. Uh, I have rejoiced in the way of the Lord, uh, the way of your testimonies. I love that way. I love to rejoice about what you, what you do and all that you have done as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts. Meditate is the good form of worry. Right? Instead of worrying, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to, I'm going to meditate on what God says about this circumstance and this situation. That God speaks words to us to give us strength. So we meditate it, we focus on it. The, the sixth thing, I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. The, the, the seventh thing, uh, or the, yeah, the sixth thing, I shall delight in your statutes. Delight, shawa, means take pleasure in. I take pleasure in your statutes. I see the goodness of it. It, it brings life to me when I think on it. That it pleases me to say the word of God. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. It pleases me to say those things. That, that when I read the Song of Solomon, and I know that the... the the, the bridegroom is, is really a, a, a picture of our Father speaking over us. And I hear all these words, how much I love you, my daughter, my bride. My heart beats after you. Those are powerful and it brings delight. It pleases me. And then it says, I shall not forget your word, that we, that we remember it. We remember his word. And when I think about remembering, do not, do not forget. Do not forget my word. I think of Psalm 103. So let's go to, just turn over with me to Psalm 103. David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Why is he blessing the Lord in here? He's blessing the Lord because he's saying, I am remembering all the things that God has given me. All the things that God has done for me. I'm remembering those things. I put myself into remembrance and I forget, I don't forget what he's given to me. And so this is why his soul begins to bless the Lord. And he says, who pardons all your iniquities. He pardons. He forgives my iniquity. He forgives my sin. He heals all of my diseases. These are the benefits of God. Who redeems my life from the pit. He brings value to me. He crowns me with loving kindness and compassion. He satisfies my years with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds. He brings vindication for me, is the word, and judgments for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the sons of Israel. He makes known himself to me. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness. Verse 11, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. In verse 17, but the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. The loving kindness will never end. The Lord has established his throne in heavens. We just talked about 
The Lord has established. It's the same word. He's established his word. He's established his throne. He's established who he is in the heavens. His sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, who serve him, doing his will. Doing his word, doing what he desires. Bless you, O works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We can see why David was so filled with blessing because he was recounting all of these blessings that the Lord has given to him. If you want to think, and if you want to think yourself happy, if you want to get excited in the Lord, I encourage you, go through this and let it hit you. Speak these things out with your words. Speak them out loud in the atmosphere, in your household, that if there are things that, that are happening that you're just like, oh, Lord, this, things just seem out of control, and I can't do anything about them. Get into this word and begin declaring this word in your circumstances. This is what I believe about my God. This is what I believe that I have in him. And I declare these things. And I let them be firm and strong on the inside of me. This is how the word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. That this is what happens. That we, we give ourselves to the word and it is living through us. It lives in us. It is the living, enduring Word of God, isn't it? We say that about Jesus, but Jesus came to give us His words. He says, I want you to abide in me. Abide in my words. Abide in the things that I have said. And let these words then come out and bring life into your circumstances. That we have all kinds of saints... All kinds of testimonies of saints that understood <laughs> about the word getting on the inside of them. And, and I think about Paul. And I really like, you know, Paul is going through, and Romans 8 is just classic. And just, just read Romans 8 if you want to be encouraged. But Paul says, okay, this is Paul, and in 2 Corinthians 11, uh, 11 2, he says that Paul received 39 lashes five times. He says, I've been beaten. Beaten like that, received 40 minus 1 five times. That I have also been beaten with rods three times. That I was stoned and left for dead. That three times I have been shipwrecked. That in every city I go, dangers await me. Why, Paul? Why do you keep going? Why do you keep giving yourself to this? I think that we have a lot of scripture to see why Paul did what he did. Because of the Word of God in his calling and who he knew he was and what he, God had done for him. That, that Paul, when you, when you think of what Paul says in light of that, in light of all his beatings, his whippings, being stoned, and just having people chase him out of cities, he says in Romans 8, 38, well, let's go back to 35. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, distress, or persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? He knew all those things. He knew every one of those. Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced... Grab hold of that word. I am convinced. It is settled on the inside of me that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us, me, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That because Paul was so convinced of this, he was willing to, after the first time being beaten with 39 lashes, 
He would continue to submit himself into that kind of atmosphere so that the gospel would go forth, that the kingdom of God, the good news of Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus would, be, would come to people that were hurting and broken and who needed him. That he didn't go hide away in a mountain somewhere. Well, that was enough. But because of this prevailing word on the inside of him, because this world was settled on the inside of him, who he was, that when the the skies opened up for Paul and Jesus said, I want you to be an apostle to the Gentiles, that he submitted to that word and he allowed that word to be settled on the inside of him. But don't you think that Paul kept rehearsing all of these things? This is why we have so much good stuff, because Paul kept rehearsing it, and he would rehearse it to other people, that he would send them the encouragement that he had by the Spirit, that he would say, hey, I want you to think on this, because this is God's Word. This is what he has done. This is what he says. (laughs) That God has his word, it is established and is set in the heavens, and that he has given his words and he, is, he pours forth his words and he wants us to get it on the inside, right? We see in the Old Testament that Israel kind of had a problem with that. That he kept speaking his words, speaking through his prophets, speaking through angels. He, they, God kept speaking to Israel but they were still having a hard time grasping the word. And like, like the story that I told about my dad when he was telling me what he wanted, I was like, I understood every word that he said, but I was still having a problem with it. Still couldn't quite get it. So what did my dad do? <laughs> Thankfully, he came and helped me out. He came and he actually showed me the way. He showed me what his words looked like. That his word is established in heaven. The heavenlies has, has wonderful things in, and, and that need to come and be manifest on the earth. Well, then God said, okay, I'm going to take the heavenlies and I'm going to bring it to the earth. And I will manifest my word on the earth. that that's how it was going to make sense. It had to make sense. It was going to make sense through someone coming and displaying what the Word being alive on the earth would look like. Heavenly words on display through a life. And we know that's Christ. That Hebrews 1, 3, it says, He is the radiance of His glory and the exact representation of His nature. That if you turn to, uh, go ahead and turn to 1 John 1 1. And we know John was the apostle that, that was leaning back on, on Jesus and uh, leaning on his chest uh, at the Last Supper. And that, that John was even labeled by the other disciples. You know, he was the one that Jesus loved. Of course, Jesus loved them all. But it just became known as that. But, but John, he says, in his gospel, he says, in the beginning was what? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So there's no separation of the Word and God, right? So we understand the Word is established in heaven. The Word is God, established in the heavens. So then in 1 John... He kind of elaborates a little bit more in this, and he says, what was from the beginning, which we know was the Word, we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the Word of life. I just, oh, I love this verse. We looked at it. We looked at the Word. We touched the Word. We grabbed hold of it that we even heard it speaking to us. It kept calling to us. It kept speaking to us. What we have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life 
was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you so that you may too have that fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be complete, may be made complete in you. (laughs) That the Word was to have life in it. It was to be displayed. That the Word came alive in Christ Jesus. That Jesus, Jesus helped us better understand what the Word of God looked like with His life. That He demonstrated to each one what what the love of God looked like, what the truth of God looked like. That it says that when Jesus comes back riding on his white horse, which we feel, <laughs> most of us feel is coming very soon, uh, we, we know that Jesus, when he's coming on the white horse, that his name is the Word of God. The Word of God is going to come and be established. As it is established in the heavens, there is no getting around it. There is not if it's going to happen, it's just when it's going to happen, right? We know that the Word that is coming from heaven will perform every good purpose that it is sent forth to to perform. That Jesus will set up his kingdom and he will gather his elect and we will reign with him for a thousand years. The enemy will be released for a short time and then death and hell will be defeated and all will be thrown into the lake of fire. And then we will all be with him forever. That the new heavens and the new earth will come together and the, the new city of God will come down. And God will be within it. And God will bring its, be its light. And there we will be with God forevermore. That, that the Word is going to happen. It, it's set. But the Word became flesh. He dwelt among us. I love this verse. 1 Corinthians 1.30 But God, but by, doing his, uh, but by His doing, you are in Christ, who became to us, who was made to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That Jesus is the definition of these words. Jesus is the definition of of all of these good words that we see. Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. These are all Christ. That Peter says that we need to be established in present truth and that we have this prophetic word made more sure on the inside of us, that, that this word becomes flesh to us. It has skin on. And that we, have, we come into agreement with this word when we agree with what Christ has done for us. And it's, it's to change our lives. I love that, that God used even the prophets of the Old Testament, to demonstrate His words. Now, there's some that I probably even couldn't say in mixed company, but there was a lot of things that God God told His prophets to do to demonstrate the Word. One of the most powerful ones, I believe, is Hosea. And he says, Hosea, I want you to marry a promiscuous or really a prostitute. I want you to marry her. I want you to show covenant love towards her. I want you to care for her. And even when she runs away and she goes into the arms of other men, I want you to grab, I want you to go and I want you to get her and bring her back and love her again. And that Hosea became the living word of God. That his life was a demonstration that people would would see Hosea, and he's like, why is he doing that? He is a man of God. How could he connect himself with such a woman? 
But God said, I want you to do this, Hosea, so that you show my heart for my people. That you will be my living word on the earth. That Jesus did this in perfection. Didn't he? That every, every word that, that you can think of that's good, that Jesus gives us the definition. That Jesus lived it out in front of us. Savior, healer, redeemer, comforter, king, friend, brother, righteous, love, loving kindness, truth, the way, shepherd, light, life, peace, forgiveness, holiness, mercy, grace, light. We really don't know the full definition of this word until we know Jesus. That when I see Jesus, I come into better understanding of this word. Let me give you an example. Jesus and the woman at the well. I believe that that was a clear demonstration of redemption. I mean, there was a, it was a demonstration of a lot of other things too. But I see redemption happening there. This lady that has been kind of cast off by society, that, that couldn't even go and get water when all the other women were getting water, that Jesus then brought life, brought living water on the inside of her, and that she brought, he brought value back to her. That he began to, to pull her out of her place of destruction and bring life. The, the not so blind anymore Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus crying out to Jesus. Jesus goes and he puts his hand on his eyes and he begins to see. Healer. That the Gadarene demoniac and his father understood what freedom really was. That they understood that when Jesus set him free and that the town was no longer terrorized because of it, they understood what freedom really looked like. I believe we see honor when Jesus allows the woman with the alabaster box to, to pour anointing oil over him and and wipe, wipe her tears off of his feet with her hair. And that he didn't, come, he didn't judge her, but he, in fact he spoke blessing and honor over her. 5,000 5, people plus, you know, wife and kids and family. We see he's provider. I imagine that the soldiers began to see what the definition of forgiveness was when they saw after they had pierced his hands and his feet and they saw the people mocking him and they saw the people casting lots for his clothes that in his state of pain and agony that Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That Mary and Martha... <laughs> The disciples, all that were in their household, they understood what resurrection life was when Jesus cried out to the tombs, Lazarus, come forth. That they understood that word in a whole new way. That Jesus truly was the way, the truth, and the life. That Jesus was just this wonderful demonstration of all these words of God on the earth. And that, that now <laughs> He has then given us this same ministry of reconciliation. That He wants us then to be His ambassadors in this same way. This this. This word that is in the heavens, right, that we said now needs to be settled in me, that now has been displayed to me in even a greater measure through the life of Christ, that now this word that he has given, I, he wants it to be on the inside of us, that now, just as Jesus was the living word on the earth, and I'm not speaking blasphemy, he wants, <laughs> he wants us to be this living word on the earth. That people need to see the definition of love, of comfort, of redemption, of security, 
of life. And they see it in us. Jesus said, Jesus said, my word goes forth, and I'm going to go to Isaiah 55. Um, Isaiah 55, and he's talking about his word in a uh, familiar passage. It says, for the rain and the snow come down from Isaiah 55, 10, for the rain and the snow come down from heaven and they do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnish the seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. And we pray this a whole lot and we say, thank you God for your word that comes forth and it, it's, it accomplishes what it's sent forth to accomplish. Well, we, we neglect the next verse that says, for you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hill will break forth into shouts of joy before you. And all the trees will, of the field will clap their hands. And instead of thorn bushes, the cypress will come up. Instead of the nettle, the myrtle will come up. There will be a, it will be a memorial to the Lord that the land is waiting for the words of blessing to be revealed. The words of life to be revealed, and it's revealed in the sons and daughters of God. That it says in, in Romans that creation is groaning, waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. That the word of God would be made manifest, and the, the life that is really truly in the earth that God wants to bring forth, it comes forth when we speak these things. When we, we live this word in the earth, we let it go. That we are demonstrators of this word. And in Matthew, uh, Jesus, on the Sermon on the Mount, he says, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Be generous to those that take from you. Keep walking with people that take advantage of you. Go the extra mile. And this shows that heavenly realities <laughs> that Jesus wants, Lord, that, that, that they come when we give ourselves completely to the word that's placed on the inside of us. I can't do that. How can I love my enemy? How can I do this? How can I be kind to somebody that's taken advantage of me? And I mean, really, this is where I'm trying to come with this whole thing. It's just kind of precept upon precept. That this settled word on the inside of us needs to come out then. If I believe in forgiveness, then I need to forgive, even in the midst of someone that has betrayed me. That if I believe in restoration then I can't overlook someone and say, well, they're just too far gone. That if I believe that God cancels all my debts, then I need to believe that I can cancel someone's debts. And I say that one because, and as I was just going through this, I remember the Lord asked me to do something, and we had, we had loaned out a large sum of money, thousands and thousands of dollars, and it was not coming back. <laughs> and, and I thought, dear Jesus, what are we going to do? And, and it's just, oh, we were not getting this, this money back from this, uh, this person. And, and I just remember the Lord said, I want you to cancel the debt. He said, I've canceled your debt and I want you to cancel their debt. And I'm not saying that you, you, cannot ne you can never get... This is just what God said to me, okay? God said, I want you to cancel the debt. And I said, I don't think I can. I don't know how I can do that, God. And then he just said, do you trust me? And I said, I do trust you, but I really need help. I'm going to need help with this. And then I said, Lord, Valerie's never going to go for this. <laughs> kind of throw that, up, throw that one up to him. <laughs> Valerie's never going to go for this. And, and I just remember I kind of marinated on it for a week. And the Lord just kept just kind of nudging me. So are you going to talk to your wife about this? Are you going to talk to I was like, she's just not going to go for it, Father. He's like, you just need to talk to her. Well, I finally broke down and I went and I, went and I said, 
you know, hon, I, I think I, I, I want to talk to you about this debt that we're holding um, with, this, with this family. And, and she said, I know the Lord's already talked to me about it. I was like, really? Okay. And so the Lord just, you know, just completely confirmed it. And it was so beautiful. You know, I just remember even when I said that and she said that, I felt like this completely release. And okay, I can definitely trust you. I can trust you with this. And so we did. We canceled the debt. And, and I felt such a peace about it. And I mean, this was, this was a big amount for our family. I mean, it was a big amount for most people, but, you know, maybe not, well, a lot of people. It was, it was a large amount. And, and I said, God, you know, it doesn't even matter. I'm just going to trust you. Well, you know, a month later, somebody drives up and I'm like, hey, Pastor Jim, Pastor Jim, come here. I walk over there and there's a, and he, he grabs something and he, he puts a card in my hand. He's like, I just want you to have that. And the Lord says he, that he, uh, we, just, we just needed to give that to you. <laughs> I open the card, and, and it's just, you know, you're, you're a blessing, and we just, we just heard God say that we needed to give this to you. You know, the, there was a check in there, and that check was a little bit more than all that money that we had just forgiven. And I said, you are God, and I am not. <laughs> but Lord, I am thankful that your word can be settled in me. That there are prayer times when, when I pray, and, and a lot of us will, well, you don't pray for, for patience because you, you don't want what's coming. <laughs> and I understand the idea of that, but if you're praying for something good, God is wanting to bring something good in your life. And if it is through some struggle, that's okay, because the good is going to far outweigh what you had been through. Because I don't think that Paul would say for a minute that I wished I hadn't have been beaten like that. Well, I mean, he may have said, I wish I hadn't been. I wish I hadn't have to go through. But I bet, I bet, though, that because of all of those things that he went through, that the word was settled in him. I am convinced that neither life nor death, nor principalities or power, nor, nor anything, nor distresses or persecutions can separate me from the love of God, can separate me from the heavenly blessings that I have, can separate me from the word that has been established in the heavens, that that is not separated from me in any way. Lord, allow us to be settled in your word. Lord, and I say for myself, whatever it takes... Whatever it takes, God, let your word be settled in me. If that's your heart, I just want you to stand and I want to pray over you that the Lord wants this word, this heavenly word, just to be settled and strong and bring strength to your life. Lord, I thank you for each one who is standing here, I say that they stand on your word, they stand in your word, that they stand in truth, that in this day of, uh, of shaking, Lord, I thank you that they stand on what cannot be shaken, that the immutable truths of the heavenly realms are theirs today and forever. 
that these words shall not depart from their mouth, that these words will be a part of them, that they will continually be coming forth from them, that this word will be, be strength and life and health and peace and joy and restoration and freedom and redemption on the inside of them. But Lord, even more than that, it will be all of these things to the world through them that they are the demonstrations of the living word on the earth. And I thank you. I thank you, God, that you can settle your word on the earth through those who carry the settled word. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for strength in the inward parts, for truth in the inward parts, that that is your desire, that that is your purpose And we just thank you and we submit to that. Lord, let our lives as Jesus, as Hosea, as Isaiah, as all the prophets of old, Lord, they they submitted to your words. Their life became testimonies of your living word on the inside of them. Lord, I pray that for each person in this place. Lord, that they go forth in the settled word of God that there is nothing that can separate them from this settled word. It speaks on their behalf. It speaks about them. It speaks to them. Lord, we thank you for that settled word today. I receive, we receive it. Breathe upon us again, O breath of life. Breathe your words in fresh and new. Lord, let these settled words just become even stronger within us. I'm just going to ask the ministry team to come forth. If you would like us to pray with you, we would love to pray for you for salvation, healing, just any kind of freedom, freedom from circumstances, situations, anything that might be hindering your life in any way. We want to pray that with you. If there's any that I just, I just feel like I need to get right with Jesus, we want to pray with you. Just come and we we would love to pray and see God move in your life. So Father God, I just thank you for each one. I speak blessing, peace, and mercy be with them, both now until you come back riding on that white horse. Faithful and true are you, O God. We so expect your goodness to be revealed. Oh, you are so good, O God, and we thank you for it. Let your blessing be on each one in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please, if you would like prayer, we would love to pray with you. Just please come and and we would pray with you. Blessings to you this week. Walk in the favor and the blessing, the fear and the word of the Lord.